All of the series opening games in the second round of the NHL playoffs are over as we move forward in the chase for the Stanley Cup. We have four very interesting matchups in the conference semifinals. So let's discuss with the senior NHL writer for The Athletic and the co-host of the Puck Soup podcast. That is Sean McIndoo. Sean, how's it going? It's going good, man. This is this has been a really, really good first round. And uh, so far, start of the second round. Looks like we're just picking up where we left off. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, the madness, the upsets, all of that that we've seen in the NHL playoffs thus far seems like it's just continuing. So let's start in the East. The Florida Panthers, they've probably been the biggest surprise heading into the playoffs. They barely clinched the last wild card spot in the East, but so far they've been phenomenal. First knocking out the historic Boston Bruins, and then on Tuesday taking game one versus the Leafs up in Toronto where you are right now. Florida looks very dangerous, Sean. So right now, would you say they are the team to beat in the East? I don't know that I'd go quite that far, although they've certainly looked that way the last four games now, the the three that they finished off the Bruins with and then looking very good game one in Toronto. I mean, look, this, this is a very strange story because this team last year finished first overall. They won the President's Trophy. They were the number one team in the entire league and came into this season a lot of optimism, a lot of momentum, and it just didn't click. They weren't very good all season long. And as you say, they, they barely got back into the playoffs and yet once they got there, a face in the Boston Bruins, almost all of us counted them out, especially when they fell behind 3-1 in that series. We, we had all moved on. We had already punched the Bruins ticket to the next, uh, the next round. And yet here they are. And suddenly we're getting reminded that, hey, wait a second, this is a real good team, some real dangerous players. Uh, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say the team to beat because I, I, I'm still very, uh, you know, I think Carolina Hurricanes are, have earned that based on how they played all season long. But... Boy, Florida's right there. Florida's a scary team right now, and, and you can call them an eight seed if you want. Nobody wants any part of playing this team if they can avoid it. All right, got the Panthers as a scary team right now. You mentioned the Carolina Hurricanes. New Jersey, they fell to Carolina by a familiar 5-1 to one score line. They've seen that score line a couple of times in these playoffs. So while Carolina looked very dominant early on, the Devils, they did start to show some flashes of what got them past the Rangers. Do you think the Devils can bounce back again in this series versus Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're a Devils fan, you're looking at this and saying, okay, this is not the way we want it to start, uh, but we look back at round one against the Rangers, very similar. Devils got off to a lousy start in that one, lost the first two games of that series at home. Uh, so, and they go on the road uh, down to nothing again. A lot of people writing them off at this point. You, you look at them, the Devils, we talked about the Panthers being a very good team last year. The Devils were not a good team last year. So you look at them and you say, okay, well, they, they made the huge step forward to just make the playoffs going up against a veteran Rangers team. They're going to be happy to be there. Maybe it just hasn't clicked yet. Maybe they got to learn some of those tough lessons. And instead, they come back. They pull off the seven game win over the Rangers. And now here we are again after game one where they did not look very good. You, you got to say, well, okay, we're not going to make that mistake again of writing them off. And you have to look at them and say, okay, when you, when you see a team down two nothing going on the road and they come back and win the series, some of that's on the Rangers, but clearly the New Jersey Devils are a team that can make the adjustments, both the coaching staff as well as the players being w willing to hear that message and to adjust their game, they've been able to do that. Now, if you go out and if you, if you see a similar sort of game in game two, again, you're, you're still not writing them off, but you do want to see that, that quicker uh, transition back to being what we know they can be because you don't want to be going behind 2 nothing in series over and over again. The math just doesn't work uh, if you want to go on a long run. So game two is going to be very, very important, but no, not writing them off by any stretch. Do not write the Devils off. We've seen the resiliency. We've seen the young team win a big game seven at home and, you know, just don't want to write them off. They could do this again. Let's move over to the West. Much like the Panthers in the East, the Kraken, they stunned the league by eliminating the defending champs, the Colorado Avalanche. Tuesday, they were able to eke out an OT win versus Dallas Stars. So here's the question. Are the Kraken the real deal? Or do you believe the Stars can course correct in game two? I'm going to thread the needle. I'm going to say the answer is yes to both questions. Uh, are the Kraken the real deal? They are at this point. And this is coming from me. I've been wrong about this team all year long. Did not look at them as any sort of playoff contender coming into the season. And even throughout the season, as they were proving it on the ice, I was a little bit reluctant to get on board. But I'm on board now. And, and what's so fascinating about the, the Seattle Kraken is this is a team that doesn't have a superstar. This is a team that maybe doesn't even have a star, period. But what they've got 
is a ton of depth. And when you talk about hockey, you typically are talking about a team's first line, second line, third line, fourth line. The Seattle Kraken is a team that basically have four second lines. It's just nothing but depth. Nobody who's a Connor McDavid level star that's going to scare you. And yet you're looking at this team going, how do we shut them down? Because, you know, who do we put our defensive guys or shutdown guys on? There isn't that one guy, one line that you're going to focus on for Seattle. And it's like playing whack-a-ball. You shut down one line, great. Another one pops up that can hurt you just as much. And that was very effective against a Colorado team that granted did have some injuries and some absences. But Seattle earned that series, absolutely full stop. They earned that that win, and they earned their game one win in Dallas. Now, that having been said, the Dallas Stars are a very, very good team. And this is a team where they have a legitimate superstar in Jason Robertson who, who hasn't really looked it quite yet during the playoffs. You expect he's going to get to another level. They've got Jake Ottinger, who I would argue is the single best goaltender left in the Stanley Cup playoffs did not look that way in game one. Sometimes you just have to shrug that off and say, okay, we, we still expect that he's going to be very, very good going forward. He's not going to give up five goals in most of the games, maybe any of the games the rest of the way. So I still think Dallas has a very good shot at this, but Seattle is doing what underdogs need to do, which is when there's an opening, you got to land the punch. You got to steal that win. And they've been doing it, and it's got them a one nothing lead in this series. one nothing lead. That should be an exciting one. We'll see what happens there in game two. And finally, Sean, we got to talk about the Edmonton Oilers. They fell to the Vegas Knights last night in spite of Leon Drysdale scoring four goals. Do you believe Edmonton is too reliant on McDavid and Drysdale? I mean, that's the million-dollar question, and for years now, the answer has been yes. The answer has been this is a team that has two generational superstars. Connor McDavid, the best player in the league, no debate about it. Leon Drysdale quite possibly number two, certainly a guy you would put in the in the top four or five. And do they have enough around them? And for years, the answer was clearly no. There wasn't enough depth there. This year was supposed to be different. This year, they've got Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who's been there forever, but he breaks out, has a career year, gets 100 points. Evander Kane, a very, very effective player when he's healthy, when he's in the lineup. Uh, Zach Hyman, a guy that maybe doesn't drive offense completely on his own, but a very good supporting piece. And they go and get Matthias Ekholm, which reshapes the blue line. That was their big deadline deal. It felt like all the pieces were finally in place where you could say, all right, we let Connor and Leon cook, but the rest of us are there to support, and, and we've got enough depth that even if they can get shut down, we still got enough to, uh, to, to eke out a win, and nobody's been able to shut them down yet. But And yet... Still not enough to get the win. Again, you know, we saw it with the Dallas-Seattle series. A guy scores four goals. That should be it. That that should be a win. Somebody has a career game like that, and yet they don't get it. Stuart Skinner was not very good, especially the first half of that game in goal, and nobody else able to step up and provide that one extra goal they needed. But again, Vegas is a very, very good team. There's a ton of star power in this series. This has got a long way to go. This is a series that if you're if you're looking at it, from the standpoint of, of trying to be impartial and figure out who's going to win, you figure it's a long series. If you're looking at it as a fan, you're begging for it to be a long series because this one could be so much fun. Yeah, it could be fun. Could be a lot of goal scoring in there too. When you get four goals from Josido, you want to get that win. But they weren't able to do that in game one. So we shall see how the plays off. Sean, it's an exciting, as you said, first round of the NHL playoffs. The second round looks like it could be just as exciting. Everyone, that is Sean McIndoo, NHL writer for the athletic senior NHL writer. I put that senior on your name and also the co-host of the Puck Soup. Sean, thanks for joining me. It was so good to talk some Stanley Cup playoffs with you. Really appreciate it, man. Right on. Love it. Thanks for having me. Anytime.